I became a prison warden 34 years ago. I remember my mom told me, she said, God's gonna hold you accountable that those guys know him. When I first got to Angola, it was blood every night. What happened, we had no higher education in prison, and if we have education, especially with a life for population, and the Angola population at that time was 5,108 prisoners, with 95% of them gonna die there, so there was no hope. So hope is Jesus Christ. Hope is that you're gonna go somewhere when you die. Hope is knowing there's heaven and, and knowing Jesus. We had to have something to change it, and so I was praying for wisdom. I knew the seminary was my passion, and I remember looking at the sky and saying, thank you, Jesus, for having me think of that, because I'd have never thought of that, because he was answering the prayer when it came to running the prison, because I'd run another one 14 years, but it wasn't like that. And so what better way, the seminary just fell in my lap. The seminary actually started in 90, 1996, and by the year 2000, the prison had changed so much that we could then start working women in the dormitories where the men were because it was safe. When these guys graduate from the seminary, they have been trained in counseling. They know how to teach anger management. They know how to counsel families, how to get families back together, how to get their own family back together. You have pastors who are prisoners who are training other prisoners to deal with their family and family issues, but also keeping peace in the prison. So Angola's violence dropped below the violence of any other prison in the country, not even its size. We saw the culture in the prison change. We coined the term moral rehabilitation because that's what it was. They morally had changed and rehabilitated and did it quick. But it was Jesus Christ that did it. To the corrections industry, it was all whoosh. Y'all doing all that God stuff, and they just, you know, they just carrying the Bible to get out of prison. We decided, well, we have to prove it. And so Baylor offered to do, this, to do the study, but the study was really pricey. By that time, then Premier Design was on board with us, and they saw it happening. And so I called Tim. And so Tim, carrying on the passion of his mom and dad, said yes. The research proved that it really worked. And beyond a shadow of a doubt. And so we use the research, and that's what's getting us in all these other states. Without the research, they would still be naysayers. So that's our little Bible to go and say, hey, these seminaries really work. These programs really work. They will change the culture of your prison. But every prison where the seminary went is a safer place today. We had over 2,000 visitors a month coming to our museum and coming to the prison because they wanted to see how could this be. This was a miracle. Well, it's a miracle of God. I really appreciate the support I get and uh, the prison gets and got from, uh, from Premier Design. We built a church. We did a TV station. We did everything we needed to do. They did. They supported us. We wouldn't have the seminary that we have today if it hadn't been for you all. You made a difference more than you know in a lot of places because that seminary took off. And now we have one in Texas, and we just started a women's seminary in Texas. And so now that program is in 26 states in 15 foreign countries. It's in Cuba. It's in Dominican Republic. So this thing is going worldwide. It started right here with Andy and Joan Horner and with Premier Design. It's just unbelievable what we're doing.